grace. It's because of his greatness and his goodness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While I was out and down. Hallelujah. The great God of the heavens came down and he lifted me up. That's why I can wave my hands. I can clap my hands. I can say that he's awesome in this place. Oh Lord, just give the Lord a hand in praise for His mercy. Bless the Lord, all oh my soul. David says, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name, hallelujah. Everything that has breath, let's give God praise this morning. He's worthy this morning to be praised, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Well, isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? In the house of the Lord there is fullness of joy. It's joy unspeakable and it's full of glory. And that's why we lift our hands to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords. For He is worthy this morning to be praised. Hallelujah. I wonder if we can just bow our heads and raise our hands to the Lord. And let's just sing, give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Hallelujah. Let the weak say, I am strong. If you're feeling weak this morning, just know in, the, in His presence you are made perfect and you are made strong. Because His presence, His anointing makes the difference. Blessed be the name of the Lord as we bow our heads. As we invite the King of Kings in our midst this morning. Because He is Jesus Christ. His hand. Give thanks, give thanks. Oh, with a grateful heart, give thanks to, to the whole. Give thanks because, because He's dear. Jesus Christ. Just say, give thanks, give thanks this morning. Precious Brother David Stellenberg Jr. to come and open the Lord's meeting in the word of prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Touching Jesus, touching Jesus. It's all that matters this morning. And I believe, my visitor friend, that your life won't be the same. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads. You're standing in the need of prayer this morning. We might see the hand this morning, but the Lord see the heart. 
And I believe all things are possible. Let's just all believe this morning. As our precious brother steps forward. I say, Touching Jesus, He's all. Oh yes, Lord. And then your life, and your life, it will never be. this morning touching Jesus oh touching Jesus is all that matters and your life oh yes Lord Son Jesus Christ. Father, when the saints' prayers goes up this morning, Lord God, it hits through the blood of Jesus Christ. And when you hear our simple prayers this morning, Lord, you see the blood of your Son. 
father and you see a perfect prayer Amen. lord your prophet even teach us lord it's no more you praying but it's jesus praying on your behalf and lord we are so grateful this morning that we can approach you about above the name that's above every other name this morning father lord god that name has power in it lord father we are so grateful this morning that we can feel your presence we are seated in heavenly places in christ jesus this morning lord god we are shut out of the world this morning and we are shut in with god lord nothing matters what is happening in the world but what matters this morning lord is where the carcass is there the eagles are gathered this morning they are feasting on the body word of the son of man and we are so grateful this morning lord that you have revealed yourself in this last days lord to a bride that is ready to take you at your word no matter what the circumstances we take you at your word this morning all things are possible to them that believe and we believe this morning that our faith is anchored in thee our faith is anchored in the rock of ages the rock oh lord this morning we are speaking to the rock the rock that we can drink forth this morning heavenly father it's with, with sincerity that we pray this morning the same when Saul was vexed with a demon. Lord God, it took a David with a harp to play out that demon. And I'm praying to more this morning for the song items that will be sung. May it, may it cast out demons, those vexed souls this morning. May they receive healing from those song items this morning. Oh Lord, we are in a revival this morning. No wonder your prophet cried out in spoken word is the original seed. He cried out, can't you be, see why I've been so zealous for the kinds of seed that I was sowing for the body. He says, because the rain is coming. I'm talking about the real rain. And may the real rain fall this morning on the spoken word seed. That was promised by Malachi 4. Lord God, this morning... We but just may have an expectation. We like a woman with a blood issue. And your prophet says if he can find one more woman with a blood issue that can touch the hem of his garment. I pray this morning for the man of God. Your Bible calls him a ministering spirit sent straight from the throne of God. I pray may you unctionize him. May you use him this morning. May you step down the portals of glory. And may you take full control. Lord God, you have spoken to him in that room there. Oh Lord, but we know that it takes the Holy Spirit to quicken the word. I pray as he comes forth this morning with the word of life. I pray may the Holy Spirit accompany him and speak to your sheep this morning. Because you are the shepherd of the sheep. You are the true shepherd this morning. And your name is Jesus Christ. Come and bless this meeting. Come and bless every hand that's raised this morning. Release uh, their desires uh, that's within you this morning. Oh great Jehovah, take full control. Be the provider. Be the healer. Lord God this morning, be the shield. I pray may you bless the service. May you bless everything that will be said and done. And uh, Lord this morning we are mindful Amen. that Satan is going to try to interrupt the meeting. But we cancel it in the name of Jesus Christ. Because this morning, we have heaven on our mind. We have the body change on our mind. And Lord, I'm praying this morning, may your word be spoken. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray this morning, Lord, may you bless the believer. May you bless the make-believer. May you keep on make-believing. Even the unbelievers that's in our gate. May they see that Jesus Christ is the truth, he's the life, and he's the way. Bless the service. Bless all these visitors in our camp. Bless all the pastors in our camp. And may they go out here with this fire. And may it spark a revival as we near the coming of the Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, amen and amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
wonderful Savior. I want to greet every brother, every sister, every visitor, friend that's in our gates this morning. Blessed be the name of all. Feel free this morning to bless the name of Jesus with us. Hallelujah. Don't feel out this morning. This is your Father's house. Where the presence of the Lord is, there's fullness of joy. So feel free this morning to bless Jesus with us. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to ask the baptism. We're going to ask the baptism candidates just to get themselves ready for the baptism service. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Just turn around to your neighbor and say, I'm happy to see you, brother. God bless you. God bless you, my sister. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Feel free to move around. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We are together again just to bless the name of Jesus. And I believe there's something good that's about to happen this morning. Olutando la ke, olutando, olutando la ke, olutando la ke, olutando, olutando, olutando. Let's give Jesus away for free. Let's give Jesus away for free. 
Let's give Jesus a hand in praise. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're going to ask the ashes this morning just to take up the, the morning ties and offerings. Hallelujah. The world can say what they want to say. We walk with Jesus. We sit with Jesus. We sleep with Jesus. Is Jesus all on our mind? Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Isn't it good to give thanks unto the Lord? Blessed be the name of the Lord. There's a song that we sing in Afrikaans. There is more, more in my heart. Lieve Jesus, neem die donker wolke weg. There is blijdschap in my ziel. Lieve Jesus, op die troon. There is more, more in my heart. Daar is morgen, morgen in my aan, in my aan, lieve. Daar is blijdschap, lieve Jesus op die troon. Daar is morgen, lieve. Sê daar is morgen. why we can shout that's why we can dance hallelujah when the spirit of god came on david nothing could have hold him back because he felt the liberty praise god he's worthy to be praised hallelujah you may be seated this morning praise the lord 
that is just how the way I worship my Lord hallelujah the Lord has done such a great thing in your life I must wave my hands to Jesus I must shout unto the Lord it makes me the songwriter says it makes me want to shout just hallelujah for the goodness of Jesus it's a privilege and honor this morning to welcome God's servant our precious pastor twine him this morning to the platform blessed be the name of the Lord he makes me want to shout hallelujah thank you Jesus Lord you are of all the and all and all said it makes me worthy of anything it's him and all this morning it makes me want to shout thank you and all the praise sing it one more time it makes Condescended, Amen. In the, in, the, in the theophany, when he spoke the word, pray God the Logos, and I'll thank God this morning that He has predestinated us from before the foundation of the world. We are children of our Heavenly Father, who is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Great Omnipotent One. What's His name this morning? Jesus. I almost heard you. What's His name? Well, that was, uh, I almost heard what you were saying. <laughs> What's his name? Jesus! Amen. Praise God, as much better. We worship him, the supernatural God, that in the uh, praise God and never changes. He remained the same. And we are indeed very happy this morning that we can be in the house of the Lord to come listen to what God has in store for us, I believe. We're in for a tremendous blessing, and God is going to richly bless us this morning in a wonderful way. You believe that this morning? Amen. All believers this year? <laughs> Praise God. God bless you. Amen. I'd like to welcome uh, our sisters, Shippo Setu, Mabana, who can you stand this morning? Came in, Sister Margaret Jana. Amen. God bless you. I'm very glad, my brother, to accept it the invitation from our sister Margaret to accompany, accompany her here to the house of God. And I believe God had a special blessing in store for you this morning. He's going to meet with you in a wonderful way. Amen. Most welcome, my brother. God, is she bless you. Amen. We're very thankful all our pastors here, our brothers, 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 brothers. We're very happy to welcome them this morning as well. In the precious and loving name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm indeed very thankful for them that's with us here this morning. Amen. Coming a prayer to the house of God. Come be fed by the word of the Almighty God. Amen. I see with the Emil there. Amen. God bless you with the Emil. Very happy to have you with us here this morning. Amen. Long time last I've seen you, so I'm very glad. But if I God bless you this morning. Very happy to have you. But if Pariachi has another seat open for you on the platform here. 
Amen. Praise God. We're having a baptismal service this morning. I don't have to long the service. Just go into the baptismal service while I read the word of the Almighty God. The Bible reads in Acts 2, 37. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise unto you and to your children, praise God, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. And they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and he break no bread and in prayers. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. We've been having a baptismal service almost every week now. But the Bible says if they, draw, if they don't draw us to them, they will, he will draw them to us. Amen. And a supernatural yet God has just worked in the hearts of, the, of, the, of those that are predestinated to eternal life. And we are very happy for our precious sister that is going to be identified with the word of God this morning. Amen. A baptism, we know it's only for adults, not for children. Amen. Praise God, the Bible says in Acts 2, 37, Repent ye and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And I thank God this evening, this morning, uh, praise God, the Bible says in Matthew 28, 19, uh, Go into the world, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. And teach of all things. Amen. So we baptize in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Well, it's the name of the Father. Exodus 6, verse 3, the Bible says, I've always made myself known to you as God, as God the Almighty. But by my name, by my name Jehovah, which is Lord, I haven't made myself known unto you. So the name of the Father is Lord. Amen. Name of the Son, praise God. He shall call his name Jesus to be a boy child. He'll be a man child, but that man child will have a name. What will it be his name? Jesus. It'll be him that deliver, deliver his people from their sins. Holy Ghost, what it is. Acts 2 36, the Bible says, This Jesus that you have crucified, and God made both Lord and Christ. He's the Lord Jesus Christ. And Colossians 3 verse 17, he says, Everything you do in word or in deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. <laughs> I didn't know these things, but when I read the message of the hour, Malachi 4, Brother Branham, praise God, went into their dimension. Amen. And when he went into their dimension, the eagle, God could speak to him, praise God. And he in turn came back to us and told us about these things which he never knew before. By the grace of God, I thank God we have a prophet of our day. Amen. Thank God for all your Mary and Branham. I'm not ashamed to call his name. Are you ashamed to call his name? I'm not ashamed to call his name. Praise God. So God bless you this morning. I'm very glad my sister had honor for long the meeting of our expectation for Pastor Gibson to go and minister the word of God. And so I'm just hurrying fast here. Praise God. You may go into the water, brother Rodney. Let's just close our eyes for a word of prayer. Almighty God, you are still the loving and caring Father. 
We are very privileged this morning to be obedient to your word. Father, we thank you for Acts 2, 38, and that you are still saving people. I don't know whether this will be the last seed, Father, but whenever the last seed will come in, the rapture will take place. This morning, as we stand in the word, my sister have repented. She, Lord, is standing here with me in obedience. And this morning we pray as Acts 32, Acts 238 is saying, For the repentance of your sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I pray that you shower her, baptize her with your sweet Holy Spirit. Father, wheresoever she may go, let she shine out, glow out the gospel, the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Let she be a real testimony, Father, in word as well as in deed, to prophesy and to testify about the glory and the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray this morning, Father, help her undergird her as she is a witness this morning and a lot of people is witnessing this morning the baptism service of my precious sister. We're going to bury her this morning in the body of Jesus Christ. And let she be resurrected, Father, new creature in the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Wheresoever she will go this morning, Father, let she be your testimony for your honor and your glory. We pray and ask all these things, not because we are worthy, Lord, we deserve it, but we ask it in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Sister Carly Templeton, upon the confessions of your sin and the faith in the Son of God, I baptize you now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Thank you, Jesus. We've come to our song items this morning. We have quite a few song items this morning. So we'll ask the believers just to, as I call you in the order, just to go stand in the passage. So we'll just ask the believers just to line up in this order in, in the passage. Um, Sister Mary Sophia can step forward now. After Sister Mary, Brother Isaac Van Loo. After all, Brother Isaac Van Loo. <coughs> Brother John Blow. Brother John Blow this morning. After Brother John Blow. The, Brother Disney. Dis Brother Dezel. Sister Mary. After Sister Mary, the Badiachi sisters, Brother Dezel, Brother Isaac Van Lo. So it's just a Mary, just the Padiachi sisters, and Brother Daisel, and Brother Isaac Van Lo.
Greet the saints in the one favor alone, Savior Jesus Christ. As I kneel in the darkness, in the middle of the night, and Lord, I'm praying for assurance, everything's gonna be alright. Lord, I see another battle out in front of me. I'm afraid I won't be able, and I'll go down in defeat. Didn't I walk on the water? Didn't I calm the raging sea? I spoke to the wind, and hush, and I gave you peace. Didn't I? Oh, I don't know. 
Jesus Christ. Right? 
Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am lost. Through the storm. Enjoy the song items this morning. Let's give the Lord a hand in praise. Just one more time, just stand to your neighbor, say, God bless you. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Put our hands together and bless the name of Jesus. Some simply says, I don't want to stay here. I've got nothing here on earth, but heaven is my home. Give me my sing Afrikaans this morning. I love singing my home language. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It's a song that a pastor loves to sing. And he says, That was my name. Free. Free.
Pastor Peter and our Pastor William. They're going to sing for this morning as well. I'd like to welcome my precious wife. She hasn't been in service for quite some time. Very glad she's with us here this morning. Also on live streaming right around the world. Live streaming right around the world. And I believe those that, that, uh, that is hooked up, they also receive a tremendous blessing from what is um, happening in the tabernacle here this morning. You enjoy the sing this morning? Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Really enjoyed it very, very much. Praise God. And uh, you know, I read in birth pains the other day. Uh, but a baby said, the stillborn baby. And the baby is still born. There's no sound. There's no emotion. Just give a little spanking. We find the baby to start crying. Amen. So thank God this morning. Praise God. The Bible says we have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost without emotions. But we have, when you receive the Holy Ghost, then emotions come. Amen. Praise God. So I'm going to prolong the meeting as I promised. Ask Pastor Peace to Brother William. Hallelujah. 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 May the name of the Lord be glorified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the Branham Brother Branham said one thing. Ye Prapancham law. Atyanta Santosha Kadman Prasil Avaranunte Adu Adu and Chapunade. Brother Branham said, All this universe, in this universe, the most happiest people is only the bride of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And God name be praised. Today God has provided a new day in our life. How the sun was sun is rising from the in the morning time. We must be shine like a sun, how it was rising in the morning time. Hallelujah! And the name of the Lord be glorified. And we, uh, we also greet Pastor Twainam uh, in the name of the Lord. And we also greet all the saints which are the holy people sitting in this tabernacle. We bring greetings all the way from India, which is your brothers and sisters on that side. Hallelujah. And the bride of the Christ and all the families in the church. We also have the same revival back in India. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. And now we are going to sing a song which is called On the Wings of a Snow White Town. It's in Telugu. Sorry for us. We are going to sing in Telugu. You will also understand. And what I'm thinking since we arrived in uh, PE, what a mighty God we serve. He's not a dead God. His living voice till now. The people are looking at the back of the grave. In the message, there, are, there is also still grave in the message people. But we believe the bride of, true bride of Christ will never die. We are, the, we are the root of this hour. We are the Esther of this hour. Whatever we say, it will come to pass. It's no barriers in, in the kingdom of God. There is no India, there is no South Africa, there is no South Carolina. In the kingdom of God, only God loves the people, people loves the God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for your wonderful, wonderful love. We are very happy. We are in the right season in South Africa. How many know 
How many know Brother Dicklet from Namibia? How many knows Brother Pastor Jeffrey Dicklet from Namibia? I am the one that hosts him in India. I am the one that invited him for the first time in India. When he came to India, it's so sad to me. I'm an IT guy. In 2008 to 12, I'm in the university. One day God spoke to me, leave the nonsense, follow the revelation. Leave, leave the sensation and follow the revelation. And once I step in the Lord, I resign to my job. Since my birth, you know, once I was dead, in the sixth day I was born. After I was born, on the sixth day, I was in ICU. My da the doctor said to my dad, your child was died. No breathing. You see, God is not a dead God. And my father was not in the message in that time. And he said to the doctor, for the dead boy, I'm going to bring the clothes. And when he brought the clothes to me, I was not alive. But today, I was alive because of his grace. And here is the man standing next to me. Is the eyewitness. I am the eyewitness for his life. After he get married, the doctor said, you will not get the child. But God said, as I was with Abraham, I, was, I will be with you. And the pastor, after he get the marriage, after 10 years, God has given him the beautiful girl. That's why we see, as he was with Noah, as he was with Moses, as he was with Branham, but let me tell this, Brother Branham is not alive today. Brother Branham will be no more. But you will be a forever and forever. That's what we believe in India. We believe we are so happy. We are the most happiest people in the world. Not only in the world, we are greater than the angels. You know why God created us as the greater than the angels? We are more than angels because we are the Christ of this day. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Pastor Twynam. Once I was here about Pastor Twynam, but today I see. Because Pastor Dicklek always tells me, I was in PE, I was in PE with Pastor Twynam, Twynam. But today, I was with, I, I, I am standing with Twynam today. You see, God, you see, God is not stopped. God was not stopped at the healing. He moved from healing to resurrection. And God will make anything which is impossible to the possible. And the God who had created the heaven and the earth and the garden of Eden is the same God that created from nothing to the something. And our, our greetings from India. May God bless you all. Stick with the message. Stay with the word of God. Always led by the spirit of the Lord. Brother Branham had a lot of friends. But once upon a time, all the friends... They said goodbye, Brother Branham. And Brother Branham invited. When they said goodbye, Brother Branham said, Welcome, Lord Jesus. Yeah. We must say, we must not have a division in the message. What we need, we need one another. Yeah. We must pray for one another. We must lead the same Holy Ghost. Yeah. The same devil in South Africa, same devil in India. Because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let listen this. Devil is same yesterday, today, and forever. But we are the overcomers. God bless all of you. Sorry for the language. Just clap with us. We are so glad because we don't know English. We are not English people. But we are how we are enjoying. How we are rejoicing, do the same with us.
God bless you. And also brother Pansy, don't sit like that brother. Get in the spirit. <laughs> Thank you. Hima manta telaganunna Pavura pure kalapaina Hima manta telaganunna Pavura pure kalapaina Tana pavitra madhurya prema Devude naku pampeno Tana pavitra madhurya prema Devude naku pampeno Pavura pure kalapaina Rekala Paina Pavurapu Rekala Paina Pavurapu Rekala Paina Painundi Oka Suchana Devure Naku Pam Peno Paino Ni Oka Suchana Devure Naku Pam Peno Ima Manta Telaganunna Pavura Pure Kalapaina Hima manta telaganunna Pavura pure kalapaina Pravakta no vahu prayanincheno Jala pralayamulu chala rojulu Nela koraku vedikeno Palu vida muluga Pravakta no vahu payanincheno Jala pralayamulu chala rojulu Nela koraku vedikeno Palu vida muluga Suchana pampe devudu Painundi guru tu pampe no Suchana pampe devudu Painundi guru tu pampe no Pavura pure kalapaina Pavura pure kalapaina Glory, hallelujah Pavura pure kalapaina Pavura pure kalapaina Painundi oka suchana Devure naku pampeno Painundi oka suchana Devure naku pampeno Hima manta telaganunna Pavura pule kalapaina Hima manta telaganunna Pavura pule kalapaina Jesu Christu rakshakuniga Oka nadu bhoomi ki vachenu Pavalinche pashula tottelu Dina 
పశుల శాలలో ఏసు క్రీస్తు రక్షకుడిగా ఒకనాడు భూమికి వాచేను పవలించే పశుల తోటెలు దీన పశుల శాలలు పవడలేదు దైవ సూచన మనకి చెదు విసాచింపబడలేదు దైవ సూచన హోసన పావుర పూరెక్కల పైన పావురపు రెక్కల పైన పావురపు రెక్కల పైన పావురపు రెక్కల పైన వైనూటి ఒక సూచన దేవుడే నాకు పంపెను పైనూటి ఒక సూచన దేవుడే నాకు పంపెను హిమమంతా తెల్లగనున్న పావుర పూరెక్కల పైన I'm so excited, praise God, to hear the word of God this morning. And at this time, I'd like to welcome our Pastor Gibson and Brother uh, Kaya. We'll just ask Brother Gibson to come, to come to the platform. Amen. And I, I believe we're in for a tremendous time this morning. God is going to bless us. Praise God. And I thank God this morning that uh, I could meet Brother, uh, Brother Luke Gibson. I met him the other day when we had breakfast and Brother Peggy and Brother Harry and myself had breakfast at a spur. I think it was Thursday morning or Friday morning, Friday morning. And uh, then I met our pastor and such a lovely spirit that he exhibits. Beautiful spirit. Pray God that's on him. Therefore this morning it is my honor and my pleasure to welcome Pastor Gibson to the pulpit to preach the word of God. Amen. The peace of the word of God, as God will be laying it on his heart this morning. May God unshinize him, inspire him. May God touch the lips of clay with a call of fire to speak spirit spoken words this morning. Praise God. And I want to say, Pastor, proof it is yours. Ever God will lay it upon your heart. I start to say, if I had to use this when y'all tie me down this morning. <laughs> sure appreciate the Lord this morning and His great presence that we feel in this place. It's always good to go in a place and be able to feel the presence of Christ. Amen. So I appreciate Brother Twynham. Amen. Met him two years ago. Brother Beckett brought him to my hotel room and I told the brothers when he left, I said, I like that brother's spirit. Amen. So...
I want to sing a song this morning. Would that be all right? I kept thinking, well, I don't know if I'm going to sing or not. And then I, some of these singers started singing, and I, and I started doubting more whether I should sing or not because they all sang so good. And then I heard this music, and I said, oh, they can pick up what I'm going to sing. It ain't going to be no problem. Amen. I sure appreciate the Lord this morning. I'm going to start it, brother, and you just, most time I sing in Pentecostal G, so if that's, that works, amen. G, maybe I think it is. Well, old Satan used to own me, and I didn't have a prayer. Pain and sorrow was my portion. I was loaded down with care. Well, he always would accuse me, telling God what sins I bear. Pointing out my acts of weakness, shouting, look what happened there. Then one day I met the master and he changed my weary soul, took away my heavy burden, changed my life and made me whole. Satan tries his best to tell me that my sins can't be repaired, but I'm pointing back to Calvary shouting, look what happened there. Oh, from the top of Calvary's mountain to the bottom of the grave. In the presence of the angel where the flag of victory lays Well, my soul has made that trip and my Jesus paid the fare With the Holy Ghost inside me shouting, look what happened there Well, now the church can stand triumphant in the power of the cross Though Satan still he already knows lost when some brother makes the headline Satan makes the world aware but the church can still is thunder shouting look what happened there well from the top of Calvary's mountain to the bottom of the grave in the presence of the angel where the flag of victory lays well my soul has made that trip and my Jesus Give the Lord a great big hand of praise. Amen. Well, this little light of mine, oh, I'm gonna let it shine. Well, this little light of mine, oh, I'm gonna let it shine. Well, now this little light. Oh, I'm gonna let it shine. Well, now Jesus 
let it shine Well now the tokens are over my home And I'm gonna let it shine 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 Bible this morning, we could and open up to Romans chapter 8. Is this my water here? Can I? I want to tell you all Friday night I was at Brother Allen's church and I went into the office there and had my message prepared. When I sat down, I felt the Spirit of the Lord tell me. You're not going to preach that tonight. And I got instantly just nervous. And so I kind of went through my notes to another message. And when I come across another message, I felt something say, preach that. So I chose that message to preach. And I went out there on the angel trouble in the water, a season of troubling. And when I preached that message, the Spirit of the Lord came at the end of that service. And I saw God moving on a, quite a few of the young people and one of them was my boy that's with me where's he at today Jeremiah we got back to the room that night and about one o'clock in the morning I was laying on the couch and he come and sat on the other couch across from me he said daddy everything you preached tonight was for me and he said I want to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus in South Africa so I trust that we'll be able to bat did you have a baptism this morning I wish you'd baptize my boy tonight. Can you do that? Then we'll come prepared. I have seven children. He's the fifth son. My other sons have all been baptized and got the Holy Ghost. I brought him to South Carolina. I said, I got one, I mean, South African boy. Been born in South Africa the second time. Amen. Romans chapter 8, I'd like to begin with verse 31 and we'll get right into our message. Paul the Apostle said, what shall we say to these things? He's asking the question, what shall we say to these things? After he asks what, he never asks what again, he changes it to who. And he said, if God be for us, who, say who, who can be against us? And then God showed how he was for us. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for his all, how shall not he with him freely give us all things? Then he says again, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Tear anybody bring something against one of God's elect. Why? It is God that justifies. It is God that justifies a man. It is God that declares us righteous. Verse 34, he says again, Who is he that condemneth? Then he tells us, it is Christ that died. Yea, rather that he is risen again. 
Here it comes again. Who is even at the right hand of God? Here it comes again. Who also maketh intercession for us? Verse 35, here it comes again. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or pearl or sword? Everybody say nothing. If God be for you, who can be against you? And the antithesis of that would be, if God's against you, who could be for you? But God is for us this morning. And if God is for us, nobody can be against us. Let's bow our heads a moment. Father, we thank you for the blessed word of God that was written under the inspiration of the pillar of fire by Paul the Apostle. 2,000 years ago, he penned these words and they're read 2,000 years later and have just as much relevance this morning as they ever had because your word is eternal. Lord Jesus, we come behind this sacred desk this morning. Our blessed pastor, Brother Twynham, has invited us, Lord, and it's not us, but it's the Holy Spirit that must speak to our hearts this morning. And Lord, as we bow our heads, we pray that the Holy Ghost would come now and just move us aside, Lord, and direct our thoughts and our words this morning to the heart of the people. And may you anoint both the speaker and the hearer this morning. And may every need be repre that's represented us be met this morning, we pray, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the church says, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated this morning. In Romans chapter 8, Paul the Apostle is writing concerning the great work of redemption. Which we all are very familiar, especially in the ranks of this message, with that word redemption. That word has great value to every man that's ever been redeemed. God thought of you before the foundation of the world. And the prophet says he put your name in the Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the world. And that book, the prophet called it the book of redemption. Every name that would ever be redeemed, God by his great foreknowledge put your name in that book. And I want to say this, if God put your name in that book, there ain't a devil in hell that can take your name out. And if God put your name in that book, there ain't nobody, nobody, no devil, no saint, no preacher, no pope, no government, no president can ever take your name out of that book. Now, in this great plan of redemption, the prophet tells us that God himself is perfected in threes. Now I want to just lay a little foundation here for a minute. Brother Branham says God is perfected in threes. Now we realize it's not one God in three persons, but one God manifested in three separate offices. The writer, John, over there in the fifth chapter of the seventh verse says, there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, not the Son, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Three manifestations of the self-same God that has something to do with the work of redemption. Let me explain for a minute. Each time God changes mask from Father to Son to Holy Ghost, God was condescending until he got not just near man, but that he got into man. When he was God as a spirit, he was above us. But when he changed his mask 
from spirit to a man, he was God with us. But when he came in the form of the Holy Ghost, he became God in us. Every time God changed his mass, he got nearer and nearer to man until he came to reside and live in man. And that is redeem man. Now let me show you this. Redemption. The Father, before the foundation of the world, planned redemption. Then the Son, who was Elohim himself, made flesh and dwelt among us. The Son provided what the Father planned. The Son, as a man, could do what God could not do as spirit. So God planned it. The Son provided it. And the Holy Ghost produces it. So what the Father planned, the Son provided, and right here this morning is the evidence of what the Holy Ghost has produced by way of redemption. Now listen, the Father initiated it. Let me tell you how. The Father, Spirit, had power to create. Now the Father could create the blood. But as spirit, he could not shed the blood. He could only create the blood. But when God created an egg and a sperm and made a man, now he had a man who was not only his creation, but he had a man who could shed that blood. So what the Father created, the Son shed it, listen, and the Holy Ghost Activated it. The Holy Ghost applies the blood to your life. God above us, God with us, and God in us. Brother Branham tells us the definition of what it means to be redeemed. And he says it means to be brought back now you can't come back to something you wasn't originally a part of and if you brother Ben says if you was a part of God you always was a part of God and he tells us you'll never be the word at the end unless you was a thought at the beginning so brother Ben says we was in God's thinking before the foundation of the world he said, now you come like Adam, you come like me. We bypassed our original word body. Jesus come from the mind of God to word theophany, and then he became flesh and dwelt among us. So listen, the way Jesus come from God to earth, we have to go from earth back to God. So he come from thought to theophany to flesh but we came from thought directly to flesh but when we go back to God we go from flesh to theophany back to God somebody said somebody asked me said how can I know brother Luke that I got a theophany over there well first of all 2 Corinthians 5 Paul tells us that if this earthly house be dissolved we have a building of God a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens but now listen how can I know that theophany is there brother Ben tells us who is this Melchizedek I just love you know that prophet is so perfect so precise let me just tell you what I believe for a second I don't believe this message it's the thoughts of William Branham expressed. I believe it's the thoughts of Almighty God expressed to this generation. This message we have this morning is Elohim's thoughts made manifest. And do you realize you're his thoughts 
and the word is coming to word. Life comes to the seed to quicken who you always was. There's no way that a mortal man could come up with the things that William Bradham come up with. I'll go a step further. If God would have left William Branham to himself, he would have made horrible mistakes on the word. He tells us, I was about to make a horrible mistake, but 12 o'clock, he came into the room. Brother Branham says something like this, so people can catch the reality of who brought this message. It's more than a man. It's God himself. I wasn't the one that appeared down there on the Ohio River. I was only there when he appeared. I'm not the one that foretells these things as perfect as they are. I'm only one that's near when he does it. It's not what I knew. It's what I surrendered to that he spoke through. You're not feeding on a man. A man, his words will fail. But you're feeding on the unfailing body word of the Son of Man. I believe that say amen. I like to get that off my chest before we ever start. That this message come from Almighty God. This came from the straight from the throne room of heaven. God just had to borrow a vehicle, a man to do it by. Can you say praise the Lord? Redeem means to be brought back. Now we know that Brother Branham says, and I want you to watch this for a second. When God created man, now we're in Genesis 1, 26 to 28. God created man. And when God created him, he was a spirit man. John 4, 24, God's a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And man was made in the image of God. And God is a spirit. The prophet says Adam, as a spirit man, led the animal life the way the Holy Ghost leads the church today. They may have not been able, I'm just going to say it. They may have not been able to see them animals with their natural eye. The God of the earth. But he was there. He was present. They could feel him move them. We may not always see God with our natural eye. But I'm telling you he's here. We feel him. We know he's here. He inspires us. In that form Adam as spirit man. Held the abstract title deed to this earth. God was the God of the universe everywhere, but his son had this earth under his full supreme control as a minor God under God our Father. And he held the abstract title deed to this earth. Brother Adam said he could speak, and this would happen. He could speak the wind and the trees, you know, the mountains and those things. But he said he could do those things. But then when we come to Genesis 2, God begins to form. Man from the dust of the ground. Now this is not his spirit. This is his body. Brother Adam says Adam's. This is incredible. Adam's ten toes. God started from the foundation. God always. Everything that God does. That comes out right. Starts with a good foundation. You start something that ain't got a good foundation, it ain't going to come right. When the winds blow and hell comes against it, if there ain't a foundation, it's in trouble. I've told a lot of people that about these guys getting spotted to start churches. You better make sure you got a foundation to build it on or you're in trouble. Let me tell you where Satan starts. Satan don't care about the foundation. He starts from the head and goes down. But God starts from the feet and goes up. God builds his church right. Let me tell you the foundation God put on this church. Upon this rock, this revelation, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall never prevail against it. 
If God be for us, who can be against us? Now you watch what happens. Brother Branham said the animals would come around and they'd literally watch. Look like, here's what Brother Branham said, literally look like a tree stump. Them animals, a new tree's come in the garden. And his toes, Brother Branham said they stuck in the earth like the roots of a tree. Adam, Adam is spirit. Watching God make him a body. Adam was going to experience what God later would experience. He would go from spirit man to a flesh form. And ultimately that's what God would end up doing. Coming from spirit man down to become flesh man. And when he becomes a flesh man, now a body is formed. And God takes Adam, man, puts it in the flesh, and God, and he became a living soul. Now his body, he's a spirit, has a body and a soul. Is that right? Now as Adam on the earth, now the invisible God of the earth became visible. The invisible took on visible. Now he become substance like everything else that was upon the earth. Now the animal life could literally see their God. You say, preacher, come on. No, that's what Brother Bam said. Adam was the God over the earth. Then God was the God of the universe everywhere. I'll tell you this. Lucifer, Michael, Gabriel, Wormwood, on down the line, everything in heaven was named by God. So God named everything in the invisible world. But read the scripture. When it come time to name the visible world, he brought it to Adam to see what Adam would call them because Adam was the God over this earth. I'm trying to hurry here. Y'all make a man 15 years older the time he gets home. One day God looked down upon Adam and God knew when he made everything, the prophet says in marriage and divorce, you know it, made one and one of everything. One male, one female, one buck, one doe, one ram, right on down the line. He says one rooster, one chicken, one hen. One and one. But when he looked at man, God created the first day, second day, third day, come all the way down to the fifth day, and every day he said, It is good, 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 it is good. But then he looked upon man as the first time God ever said, It is not good. And he said, It wasn't good for man to be alone. Now, how did God know that? Because at one time the prophet said, He dwelt alone. And he wanted to fellowship with his own self. So he had to begin to express what he was. And God had fellowship with himself. Now listen, the woman that Adam would fellowship was a part of Adam. God took a part of Adam and made Adam a helpmate. And then when Adam would look upon this wife, he could say something like this. Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She was a part of him. Paul the apostle caught that mystery under that pillar of fire. And in Ephesians 5, in the husband and wife relationship, he takes it all the way back to Genesis 2. He said, this is a great mystery I speak concerning Christ of the church. Shall a man leave his father and mother? Adam never had to do that. But it was a great mystery concerning Christ of the church. Christ left his father and came down and cleaved to his wife. And they become one. Brother, never to be separated again. 
Let me just say this. This bride cannot do what Eve did in the beginning. We will not be deceived. We will not go away from the word. We're predestinated to believe the word. Let me go further here for a minute. He was a byproduct. I'm going to spend a lot of time here, but I just want to tell you something. Brother Branham says, again in marriage and divorce, Paul teaches it in Timothy, Adam was not deceived. The woman being deceived was in a transgression. Adam was not deceived. Matter of fact, you don't have one record that Lucifer ever came to Adam. It wouldn't have done him no good. He was in the image of God. Listen, y'all ready for this? Lucifer, the prophet says, was co-equal to God one day, all but creator. Go read it. I'm not making that up. Lucifer was co-equal to the God of the heaven. Watch this. And the woman was co-equal to the God of the earth. So the co-equal went to the co-equal. He couldn't go to the God of the earth because he couldn't deceive the God of the heaven and he can't deceive the God of the earth. So he's got to go to the byproduct. Lucifer goes to the woman. I don't know why, but I got to preach this for a minute. Brother Branham says, when Eve being deceived was in the transgression, she was deceived in what she did. He said there was a timeline. In marriage and divorce, he said there was a timeline. And when she made that decision, she broke the timeline. She stepped out of eternity over into time. Adam, being the God of the earth, was still in eternity. And Eve was in time. But Adam, as a God of the earth, had to make a decision to step out of eternity over into time in order to redeem his wife. Did you know Brother Branham says that Adam's decision that day literally moved God when he saw his love expressed in Adam? Because he knew that's what he would do one day. As Adam stepped out of eternity over the time to become his wife's sin. Christ come out of eternity. Dropped down in the body of time. And became our sin. So he could take us back to eternity again. Can you say praise the Lord? Now listen. I got to hurry. When they crossed that timeline, now the chasm is crossed and the prophet says, no way back. There's no way back. They cannot get back to the tree of life. They ate of the tree God told them not to. God had to keep his own laws, his own words. You do realize this morning we're serving a God that keeps his word. We're serving a God that when he says something, he stands behind his word. That's why I don't care what this crowd says. If the Bible said we lay our hands on the sick and they shall recover, I believe what the Word says. If we pray the prayer of faith, God will raise them up. That's what the Word says. Y'all believe that? They crossed that chasm from time over an eternity. God drove them out of the garden. Just before they... Went out of the garden. I'd like to ask this question. The prophet says they were clothed in skins. He said the blood ran down Adam's legs. Eve's hair, head was laying in Adam's chest and the blood was all in her hair. And he watched them as they left the garden of Eden. He said before they got out of there, Lord, the first prophecy that God ever spoke from his lips in the garden of Eden was says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed and what he was telling you is Adam you did what you did but there's coming another Adam there's coming a last Adam and he's going to he's going to correct what Eve mistake Eve made so let me tell you what God does he permits in God's Eden for Lucifer vicariously through the serpent to be Adam to his wife. And he did. He got there first. 
and he placed his seed in the womb of that woman. But the, the problem was, Adam, when she come back to Adam, Adam knew what happened. Adam understood it perfectly. My wife has committed the daughter on me. She's got a, a seed of another man in her. Now while the womb is left open, it's not closed. Adam quickly had to pull Eve to himself and place his seed in her womb. Now you've got one womb with two seeds. One's the seed of God and the other's the seed of the devil. In Satan's Eden, Lucifer be Adam to his wife. Two seeds come out of that garden. We know what it is. Cain and Abel. The womb was left open long enough for the seed of the original man to get into her. But another seed had beaten them. Now God gives Lucifer the same amount of time. It took God six days to create this earth. Y'all know the story. One day with the Lord is a thousand years with man. Now God says, the day you eat thereof, that day you shall surely die. So do you realize the oldest man that ever lived in the Bible was 969 years and he died. There was never a man that could live a thousand years because God said the day you eat thereof, that day you shall surely die. So no man can live a thousand years. But did you know I'm sitting and standing in front of a bride of Christ that when her body's changed, she's going to go to a millennium and live 1,000 years in the millennium? Brother, I thought about that one day. I said, why in the world would God give us a thousand year millennium? Well, he just rapture us, take us to the wedding supper, and then on over to the future home, but he don't. He brings us back to earth. While we're in eternity, the earth is still in time. The prophet said it's the seventh day. But you and I ain't in the seventh day. We're in the eighth day. But we're in the seventh day living in the eighth day, which is eternal life. Think about this. Can I borrow that chair there? One of those chairs. Can I borrow that chair? I want you to imagine the millennium. Brother Bam tells us in question and answer 64 that Lucifer is in the millennium. But he's bound. Brother Bam says not by a log chain. But by a chain of circumstance. Because he ain't got nobody to work through. Because we are now flesh of his flesh. Right now we're life of his life. But there we're going to be flesh of his flesh. Bone of his bone. In other words we're going to have a body like under his own glorious body. We get to the millennium. Adam and Eve back on earth in the form of Mr. and Mrs. Jesus. And did you know the devil and all of his demons are going to be in the unemployment line? Just imagine they got to sit for 1,000 years with nothing to do. And let me tell you what he's got to do. He's got to sit there and watch the last Eve prove to him she got back to the tree of life and we're going to live that day out that he stole from us in the Garden of Eden and God's going to let us live 1,000 years to prove to the devil what you stole from him I have restored back to him. Glory. Brother, let me just say this. Everything the devil stole from you, God by the Holy Ghost can restore it back to you. He can restore your health. Come on, church. He can restore your health. He can restore your families. He can restore your church. He can restore your pastor. He can restore men of God. God is in the restoration business. Glory, 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 glory. Let me tell you something. 
Oh, you say, oh, we believe God sent Malachi 4 to restore the word. But we don't believe he can restore lives. There's a lot of hypocrites hanging around this message. In other words, they believe God can do this, but he can't do this. God can restore anything he wants to. If God be for us, who can be against us? What did God do? God left four cherubims. Lion, ox, man, eagle. And the prophet said they stood there with flaming swords guarding not the tree of life. He said they were guarding the way to the tree of life. And Brother Bam said them flaming swords, church ain't book. Laodicean church, he tells us that them swords could not be sheathed until air they were dripping with blood. So God created blood, took egg and sperm, created a man. And when that man got here, he stood before a crowd in John 14. In verse 6, and he said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. And them swords killed God's beloved son. Predetermined, the Bible said, Acts tells us. Predetermined. Them men only did what God permitted them to do. Jesus help us Jesus said no man takes my life I lay it down and I'll take it up again they didn't take his life he freely gave his life he could have called 10,000 angels to deliver him but he gave his life and them swords were not sheathed air they were dripping with the blood of Jehovah God God created it the sun shed it. And when the sun shed his blood, them four cherubims put their swords in their sheep and they gave us way back to the tree of life. Hallelujah! Now listen to this. Adam was put out of the Garden of Eden. Well, brother, sister, he held something that gave him power over the earth as a, 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 a minor god. The prophet said he held the abstract title deed to this earth. Not the abstract deed. And not the title deed, but the abstract title deed. A man can get a title and not have the abstract. But you've got to have the abstract title deed which traces it all the way back to its original owner. And brother Bim says, Almighty God. So here's what the prophet says. The prophet says, the breach. The earth went to the hands of Lucifer. But the abstract title to the earth went back in the hands of the original owner, Almighty God. Satan's filthy hands could not take that book. Are y'all listening to me? He never has owned you. God has always owned you. You're in his book. He has you in his palm. And brother, if you're in his palm, there ain't nobody that can pluck you out of the Father's hands. There said Almighty God as spirit. I'll tell you where Brother Brandon said we're at by this time. Now we're in Revelation 5 verse 1. And Brother Brandon calls the Revelation chapter 5 the most sublime chapter of the Bible. And when he comes to this book, the prophet quotes that and then he stops and goes, oh, what a book. He said, no man could take that book. And then the prophet says, no man could even look on the book, much less take the book. And then he says, oh, what a book. Now listen, when Adam was spirit and he roamed the earth and led the animal life, he never fell in that form. Adam didn't fall and Eve fell once they were put into bodies. Human form. He didn't fall as a spirit. So if he didn't fall as a spirit, God can't redeem him as a spirit. If it was a man that fell, then it has to be a man to redeem us. So God had to become a man in order to redeem us. And God became a man in the person of Jesus Christ. Brother Adam tells us in 
tells us in the rising of the sun message, God couldn't die a spirit. He said you can't kill a spirit. So God became a man so he could die in the form of his son. He said the son couldn't be a second person. God, he would be unjust to tell one son not to do this and then tell another son to go die for him. He said God changed his man from spirit to flesh and from God the Father he became the son of God. At Calvary, Christ paid the debt. Listen, I'm telling you what the Bible says. Jesus died according to the scriptures. Jesus was buried according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15. And Jesus raised from the dead according to the scriptures. In other words, this whole Old Testament told us about the birth, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Everything that Jesus did was according to the scriptures. He never broke the scriptures. That's why I said in John 8, 46, who can convince me of sin? He said, the prince of this world coming and findeth nothing in me. Show me where my life hasn't done exactly what the scripture says I would do. Now listen, he tells a religious crowd, I was out of a quoting last night, he tells a religious crowd who studied the scrolls and knew the Old Testament well, they were scholarly men, educated men that knew the scrolls but couldn't see the scrolls interpreted when it was standing in human flesh. And here's what he tells them. John 5, 39. Search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life, but they are they that testify of me. I am the scriptures made alive. So they thought, they thought they had him and they would say something like this. We have Abraham as our father. Well, he said, wait a second. Y'all really don't know who I am. Because before Abraham was, I am. And he said, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and saw it and was glad. You say, when did Abraham ever see Jesus' day? He didn't meet Jesus. He met Melchizedek in a human body. And when he met Melchizedek in a human body, he met the same God veiled in the form of a man. And he said, if you claim to be the children of Abraham, why don't y'all do as the children of Abraham what Abraham did? You know what you should be doing? You should be inviting me to your home. You ought to make me a cake. You ought to actually uh, uh, cook me a steak. Give me a glass of milk. Why don't you entertain God with skin on him? Y'all ready for this? No child of Abraham... I'm almost scared to say some of this. But no child of Abraham, true seed of Abraham, picks up a stone to throw it at God in skin. No, sir. No true seed of Abraham picks up a stone to try to stone God with skin in it. You don't stone that. You fellowship with that. You come in contact with that. Glory! Right here in this building, there's God with skin on it. 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 We don't stone one another. We fellowship with one another. Glory. Somebody say glory. I'll tell you what you do. If you got a stone this morning, you better pick up a stone only like David did. You come help us slay a giant. Don't slay your brother, slay the enemy. Woo! 
take that stone and put it to the enemy's heart tonight. Put it to the head of the enemy this morning. Let's kill our enemy, not our brother. Jesus help us. I said, Jesus help us. I said, Jesus help us. Jesus said, after he said that, after he said that, the Bible said they picked up stones and stuff. I'm going to tell you what that spirit was. It was there in Eden, on the outside of Eden, at the gate of the entrance. It was in Cain. It was Cain's seed that always persecuted the righteous seed. God's seed was always persecuted, not persecuted. Read Romans. I'll pick it up tonight on shall tribulation, shall persecution. I don't care what they say. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. So finally, you say, really, Abraham? Yes. Brother Bam said, God took 16 elements of the earth. <laughs> and he made a body. By the way, the prophet went on to say he took two more handfuls. He said, Michael and Gabriel, get in them too. And I'm going down to Abraham. <laughs> now, that body that God took from the 16 on the earth, we know, had no redemptive qualities. God was in that flesh, but that man could not be kinsman redeemer because he didn't come the way we come. But several thousand years later, here come a body that come the way we come through the womb of a woman. Now that body was the same God just in a different body, but it's the same God. And when them scribes and Pharisees stood before that man, they were literally standing before the same God that their father Abraham stood before, but it was just a different man, but the same God failed. Melchizedek became Jesus Christ. Now I'm getting to something. Now if we claim that we're the royal seed of Abraham, then you and I will respond to that man and his message. Because that was again Elohim standing in human flesh. Did you know Brother Branham taught us in, in, in Seated Discrepancy 1965, any man that don't believe in Mark 16 is a Seated Discrepancy. He went on to say this, any man that don't believe that Jesus Christ is the same in every detail except the physical body is the Seated Discrepancy. Because he is the same, but not the same in the physical form. Because he changes his mass, but he's still the same God. And the same God that dwelt behind the skins of William Branham stands behind all these skins here this morning. It's still Elohim made flesh and dwelt among us. So you know what I want to do? I want to entertain God in flesh. 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 So they, they decided they would switch on him. And they said, well, we believe Moses. He said, now wait a second. If you believe Moses, you'd believe me. For Moses wrote of me. The Lord your God shall raise up a prophet like unto me. And him shall you hear in all things. And every soul that doesn't hear that prophet shall be cut off. That was a prophecy of Christ. In other words, he's telling them everything you read in the Old Testament, everything you study in the Old Testament, it's standing right here in front of you. Every type and every shadow has been manifested before you in a man called Jesus Christ. He was the complete revelation of the Old Testament. Let me just take a breath for a minute. Matthew chapter 4, this Jesus, 
is drove to the backside of the desert by the capital S P I R I T Spirit, Holy Spirit. Satan didn't lead him back there. God led him to the wilderness. And there in the wilderness, he met Satan, Lucifer, the one that Adam handed the earth to in the beginning. Three temptations, harvest time. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the part of life. Brother Bam picks it up in harvest time, 64, and he describes it to us. But here's what I'm telling you. Jesus was confronted by the same devil Adam faced. And what he told him, if you be this or if you do this. And Brother Bam said Jesus didn't use gifts on him. Jesus quoted the word to him. Let me tell you something. They can believe what they want to. But Jesus was not just a prophet of God. He was the God of all the prophets. I'm going to show you how, how, how bad these men had it misconstrued it. John 10, Jesus said, I and my father are one. They picked up stones and stoned him again. You see that old stone in spirit? That stone in spirit is in religious people, not Holy Ghost field people. Now y'all said you wanted the Holy Ghost to lead a man. Just let him lead me now. Brother Bam stood there in the fifth seal and he was studying it. And what God showed him that day in the fifth seal, he said, I literally came up out of my seat and had to walk around the room. And there was something he saw in them prophets. Actually, he says those prophets was them seals. That sixth seal. But then he said what God showed him was is that crowd that was under the fifth seal the way he knew they were not bride. They wanted vengeance. Any man that wants, I don't care, any man that wants vengeance, you put yourself in a bad spot with God. Brother Ben said, I knew they were not bride when they wanted vengeance. But then he takes us over to Stephen that was being stoned. And while he was being stoned, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He said the same spirit that was in our Lord at Calvary come back and was manifested in Stephen. That was Christ in Stephen. <laughs> Satan said, the original, if you look it up, it doesn't mean that Satan had to bow with two knees. Or, or Jesus said, Satan said, just give me one knee. Just give me one. And Jesus wouldn't even give me one. He said, I'll give you the king of the world. The prophet said, see, he owned them. But he said he owned them by squatter rights. And he said, Jesus knew that if he accepted them, he would only be receiving them on the same grounds that Lucifer had them. But so he was trying to give Jesus a kingdom without Calvary. But Jesus turned and set his face like a flint toward Calvary. Because he knew when he went to Calvary, if he died and he was buried and he raised again, he would ascend to the Father. And guess who was sitting there in heaven with the book in his right hand, waiting on a man to redeem that book. And listen to the question that was asked, and I'll hurry. The question that was asked, who? He's right there in Romans 8. Who? is worthy to take the book. They said no man in heaven, no man in the earth, no man under the earth. I'm not here to hurt your feelings, but Adam wasn't worthy. Moses wasn't worthy. Elijah wasn't worthy. Isaiah wasn't worthy. Ezekiel wasn't worthy. John the Baptist wasn't worthy. Paul wasn't worthy. William Branham wasn't worthy. Only the lamb was worthy to take that book. Hallelujah, which was Jesus Christ. And the prophet said, John, begin to weep. He said, John, begin to weep. He said, weep not, John. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah hath prevailed. That means he has overcome and he's got rights to take that buck. Brother Branham says, out from behind the throne, out of eternity come a man. And John said, I turned to see a lion, but I saw a lamb. And he came. Everybody say, he came. He came and took the book 
by the right hand to him that sat upon the throne. Jesus was our kinsman redeemer. He was the Lamb of God that had rights to take that book. He redeemed back everything that Adam lost in the Garden of Eden. Let me just tell this story real fast and then I'll go on. Now I gotta hurry because we got service again at four o'clock, right? And I've got to eat and sleep. I preached so hard last night, I ain't kidding you. I went home, my stomach it's starting to hurt right now. But my stomach hurt for two hours from preaching so hard. You South Africans, I'm gonna have to spread this out about every two or three years. I don't think I can handle every year. Brother Twynham, how'd you stand it? How many of y'all, how many of y'all like boxing? How many of y'all like boxing? Oh, come on now, you, 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 don't have, you, don't, you can tell us. We ain't going to get mad at you because you might have a television. I'm just talking about how many like boxing. I like boxing. If my daddy would have let me, I would have become one. But I like to fight. This time it ain't my brothers, it's the devil. Used to be all the kids in the neighborhood and all the kids at the school. I was a troublemaker. Well, I could preach right there a while. But when God gave me the Holy Ghost, he took away my troublemaking spirit. (laughs) There was a boxer by the name of Joe Lewis. I mean, it was who Joe Lewis was. He was a bad boy. He was, as you would say, he was the man. The last fight Joe Lewis had, he was beat so bad that he spent three days in the hospital trying to recoup from taking the beating so bad. The fourth day, they let him out of the hospital and hand Joe a check. Joe went home. Knocked on the door and they said, Mrs. Lewis answered. Joe looked at her and Joe handed her the check. They said, Joe was a conqueror, but Mrs. Lewis was more than a conqueror. She didn't take the fight, she didn't take a beating, but she got the benefits of what Joe went through. Let me tell you somebody greater than Joe Lewis, his name is Jesus Christ. He took a beating at Calvary. He laid in the hospital. He laid in the grave three days. But when he resurrected, he handed us the check. Jesus is the mighty conqueror. But we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. Glory! You know what he did? He signed the check. Right down the bottom, in blood, it says, The Lord Jesus Christ. And he hands you the check and says, fill it out for what you need and cash it in. It's yours. He's blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. Brother, it's time we rise up. Quit living below our God-given privileges. Quit fussing with one another and turn back to the Word of God. Come back to the Holy Ghost. Come back to the message of the hour. And let's unite as brothers so we can get out of this old sin-cursed world and get these bodies changed. Let me finish this and I'm going. Adam lost the book. How many knows y'all he lost the book? How many knows Jesus redeemed the book? It's not done yet. Not done yet. It's not done. The book gets redeemed only so it can get restored. So Adam lost it. Jesus redeems it. Y'all hold on now. Elijah restores it. (laughs) February of 1963. That little man right there was in Arizona. 
and seven angels come out of eternity and drop down and pick that prophet into the air and he was caught up in the consolation of those angels I don't know about you but I'm surrounded by those angels I'm caught up glory I'm caught up in what those angels brought I said we're caught up in what those angels brought he was caught up in those angels and then he was set back down we're caught up in what those angels brought and one day he'll lift us from the earth and then set us back down in the millennium where we'll rule and reign with him 1,000 years upon this earth as bride and groom, Mr. and Mrs. Jesus Christ. Listen, when God brought those angels to that prophet, he commissioned to go back to Jeffersonville and wait for the opening of the seven seals. You know what that prophet was doing? He went back to Jeff in the bill. He wasn't trying to catch the attention of the church no more. No. They done rejected him. I preached it the other night. They done rejected our Lord. The first pool of our prophet's ministry, y'all know he loved him. They loved him. He's a young prophet. Everybody wanted him. That's right? Can I just take a minute to express this? You, you give me five, how many give me five minutes? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. <laughs> he went back to Jeffersonville for the opening of them seven seals. He sat there day by day. The angel of God would come to him. Brother Ben, when he comes to the pool, he said, now the lamb has got the book in his hand and he's starting to reveal it. William Branham was only a vehicle that Almighty God was using to express the mysteries of this book. Now let me tell you why Brother Branham says God expressed it. God expressed it to call a bride to come stand by his side. When them seals was open, your name was behind those seals. Your name was in those seals. Your name was called. When you heard this message, your name was called by the revelation of this message. Do you remember when that young prophet started out? He started out in the first full of his ministry. Did you know God told him, said, I want you to go down there among the Pentecostals. Let me just tell you all something. At that time, the life that was in the stalk and the tassel was in the shuck. And God had to send that young prophet who was converted in a Baptist church. The Baptist church was the product of the tassel. John Smith during the missionary age. But the seed doesn't come out of the tassel. The seed's got to come out of the shuck. So that prophet has to go to the Pentecostals so the seed can come out of the shuck. But that prophet, y'all ready for this? You sisters ready for this? That prophet did something he shouldn't have done and that was let a woman tell him what to do. How come you guys ain't shouting now? Come on. Stay with me. She ain't going to give you a hard time at home. That's still the word of God. Say amen, church. Some of you brothers that don't believe that, nudge her and ask her if you can say amen. But that's the truth. The life of God was in the shuck. And that prophet, God was so determined that his life would not contradict the scripture nor nature. That he took his wife and his baby to get him to obey what he told him. When Sister Branham died, y'all know Brother Branham not only called his first wife back to life, but he also called his second wife. And when he called her back, she said, Bill, she hadn't been gone but just a minute or two. She didn't go over there and get straightened up in her doctrine. 
But as soon as she came back to her body, said, Bill, I know where we made our mistake. We should have never listened to Mama. I've often wondered if, if somebody leaves their body and steps over that other side just for a minute or two and then they're called back, what is it about that dimension that she knew they should have been with them Pentecostals. Let me tell you what it was. The same Holy Ghost they felt down there in the Pentecostals was the same Holy Ghost that was on that other side. She knew it was the same atmosphere and said, Bill, we should have never listened. Go back to them Pentecostals. Now, when he goes back to them Pentecostals under the first pool of his ministry, they're protecting his ministry. You go read what Brother Bam said. He said the shock was to protect the seed in its emphasis. Remember when they came to Brobby and they said, why don't you come down here? He said, go out to your church and invite me. He says, it's the Pentecostals that's receiving this. And at that time, you go listen to what Brother Branham says about the shuck. Before it pulled away, Brother Branham says it was a good shuck, but it served its purpose. It served its time. So now, when the prophet begins to progress from first pull, sign the hand, to second pull, which was discernment, he also calls prophesying, but discernment where he could tell the very thoughts and the intents of the heart. Same God, same ministry of Christ going from first pool to second pool. Let me tell you this. He stood on the platform. I was telling him the other night. Our prophet literally had to not only perform the sign, but we were so biblically ignorant of God's word, he had to point out where his ministry was identified by the scriptures. And he'd go to Genesis 18. Then he'd take you to John 4. And then he'd say Hebrews 4.12. And he was showing you Genesis 18, John 4, Hebrews 4.12. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. That Melchizedek was flesh. Later he was made flesh. And now tonight he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Not one time did God ever miss. Not one time. I don't know if y'all ever heard a story. There was a man in the meeting one night. He's a preacher and he heard Brother Bam say, if I ever tell you anything wrong, put a sign on my back and call me a false prophet. A woman come in the prayer line. Brother Bam said, you're not from here, you're from there. And he told her where she's from and told her address. And there was two women sitting behind this man. These men had said, they, they, this man hurt these two women and said, oh, she doesn't live there. So he turned around, looked at the two women, looked at that woman up there. And after service, he got them together because it bothered him. And he got them three women again. He said, ma'am, he said, Brother Ram told you you live such such an address and such such a street and such such. He said, that's right, I do. And two women spoke up and said, no, you don't. You don't live there. She goes, I forgot to tell y'all, I moved yesterday. <laughs> Listen, brother, if God can know what you did yesterday, he sure could know you before the foundation of the world. He ain't forgot about you. You're in the palm of his hand. You were in his mind. He hadn't forgot about you. He knows you this morning. That same God that could tell what was in the heart of them people, that same God and that prophet began to tell what was in the heart of that shuck that was protecting him, and he began to prophesy against their denomination. That was it. Now what did they do? When Brother Brandon began to prophesy against the organization, demons forsook him, all of them turned him out. Time he gets down to the end, 62, he said, he quotes, he has to tell us the present stage of his ministry. They think Brother Brandon's washed up. He's done, got nowhere to preach. And the prophet picks up present stage of our ministry, goes back to Paul writing to Timothy, do the work of the evangelist. All men have forsaken me. Demons have forsaken me. And if y'all don't mind, I'd like to quote the next one. Only Luke is with me. <laughs> How many Lukes we got in the building? I'm going to stay with this prophet. I said, I'm going to stay with this prophet. He says, all men have forsaken me. Brother said, all men have forsaken me. They turned me down. Now, if you don't mind, just for a minute, follow me. Just follow me. With your eyes. Just follow me. All of a sudden, William Branham ain't welcome in the church. But he's on the outside of the church. The ministry of Christ has been rejected. He's been turned out. He's got nowhere to preach. Somebody said, why is he knocking? 
Does Christ want back in the church? No. He's knocking to open the door for you to open the door because Brother Ben said he knows he's got some predestinated seed in there that's got to come out. He don't want in our denominations. He wants us to come out of the denomination and come out here where Christ has been rejected. Brother, I heard a voice and that voice said, come out, come out, come out of her, my people. Be a shepherd. I heard an eagle scream. I heard a message in this age that told me to come out. Christ is on the outside of the church. Listen, you're on the outside of the church. We're not in that denomination no more. We're out here fellowshipping with the rejected Christ of this age. Now when the prophet comes to the third pool of his ministry, it's not to the church. No, they done reject him. Now this message is sent as Eliezer to go find a bride for Isaac. This third pool to open these seals was to call a bride to come stand by his side. John said when he took the book, this is what he said, when he took the book, when the lamb took the book, he said all of a sudden, there was screaming. Brother Ben said there was shouting. John said, Brother Ben said, John saw his name in the book. This is what Brother Ben said. John had himself a Pentecostal jubilee. All over heaven they heard him. In the earth they heard him screaming and shouting. Now somebody says, somebody says, well, for y'all to act like that, said y'all just a bunch of Pentecostal babies. I said, I got news for you. The Bible don't call them four and 20 babies. It calls them four and 20 elders. Come on, church. If it can make an elder act like that, what can it do to some of us young people here? If it can make an old man act like that, what can it do to a young man? Hallelujah. If it can put energy and power in an old body, what can it do in a young body? Someone said, are you Pentecostal? Absolutely. By experience, not by denomination. I'm Pentecost. I've got an Acts 2 Pentecostal experience, and I act just like they did on the day of Pentecost. Somebody said, Well, I have never acted the way they did on the day of Pentecost. Well, it might be because you ain't drinking the same thing they drunk on the day of Pentecost. I'm almost done, I promise. But the day of Pentecost, they weren't a bunch of high class sippers. They didn't go down to the restaurant and order wine and just sip. Their nose is in the air. They're too high class to act like that. Brother, when they were in the upper room, the Holy Ghost fell. They drunk like a bunch of drunks. That's just Sunday. Monday, they put in another tape. Tuesday. Wednesday come, they come in the house of God already intoxicated by the Holy Ghost. You didn't have to pump them. You didn't have to pry them. They already were full of the Holy Ghost. They come in the house of God with joy in their steps, with something in their heart. They got joy unspeakable and full of glory. That Episcopalian woman said, Brother Bam said in the breach, that Episcopalian woman said to a sister in our church, said, I got the Holy Ghost, but shh, don't tell nobody. Brother Bam said, I doubt you got it very much. He said, the day of Pentecost, when Peter come out of that upper room, he said, they come out of that upper room, staggering like a bunch of drunks. He said, that's the real Holy Ghost. 
Brother Ben told us later, in an invisible you, the bride of Christ, they don't want none of these shouting, screaming, hollering, speaking, tongue chewing around, run around. He said, bye. It'd be an embarrassment to the organization. But then the prophet said, but that's the only kind that the word can produce. If you get this Holy Ghost, you'll act just like they did, or you don't have the same Holy Ghost. I'll lift your hands to the Lord. Say, Lord, we want that same Holy Ghost. We want that same spirit. We want to be drunk that same way. Glory. I had an old uncle. I had an uncle that was a drunk. Let me just close on this. I'm done. I'm tired. One good sign. A man is drunk. He'll love everybody. Say, I differ with you. I still love you anyways. I'm so drunk, I ain't got time to worry about your difference. Come on, church. I think we need to drink a while. I think we need to come back to this message. We need to come back to the Holy Ghost. We need to start drinking again. I said, we need to start drinking again. We need a drunk church on the Spirit of God. Break these walls down. Bring us back to the message of this hour. Oh, let's clap our hands. Let's clap our hands to the Lord. I'll see you tonight. church was ordained. That's how every church is ordained. When God had a church, it got to be the same kind of church. Amen. Praise God. Let's raise the bride to you, Brother and says, Amen. He says, Shh. You people make too much noise. Amen. But I thank God this morning, we have heard from our theophany. Where were you when the sons of God shot up and joined? Where were you when the morning sun clapped the hands together? We went the light of the hand, jumping, shouting, and praising the Almighty God. I praise Him this morning. That's how I praise Him in the beginning. By the grace of God, Amen. I feel like jumping. I feel like praising. I feel like worshiping.
What can we say this morning? You know, someone asked Brother Benham, he said, Brother Benham, you are preaching up there. He says, how can you preach up there with all the noise going on? He says, if they don't enjoy it, I won't be preaching there. You enjoy this morning? You enjoy this morning? I'm enjoying it. I praise God. Down the road, the old man Bill. Praise God, he says, but a bill can ask you a question. Amen. He says about the rooster. He says that if you bind the rooster, bind his feet together, the next morning when the sun rises, the rooster will turn. Praise God. He'll crow out. Ask the prophet, what makes him do that? He said, because the rooster begins with it. Another thing he says, praise God, any man that has the new birth in him, if the Holy Ghost comes down on him, he's got to scream out. He's got to shout out. He's got to praise the Lord. I want to say this morning, forgive me for the way I am. But I feel, I feel fine like this. I feel happier. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Brother, brother. Uh, brother Gibson, you to be blamed for me this way that I am this morning. Brother Luke is to, blame, to, be, to be blamed for me to be so happy. Rejoice and to praise God. Amen. Thank you, Brother Luke. God bless your little son with us here this morning. You're going to be baptized this morning? Yes. Amen. Praise God. You can go to the side there, I think. They'll give you some clothes. Yes. Amen. We're going to have another baptism. <laughs> Amen. We'll be coming together this afternoon again, four o'clock. Amen. I can't wait for four o'clock to come. What I've received this morning, praise God, is incomparable. Not all the money in the world will be able to praise God suffice and satisfy me with what I've been satisfied with here this morning, the word of the Almighty God. Praise God. God bless you, Brother Gibson. What a tremendous blessing you've been to us here this morning. Praise God. Amen. While we're waiting for the candidate to come, there'll be a cottage meeting on Monday at us the Crystal's home in Ben Vogel. Monday we'll be having a cottage meeting at us the Crystal's home in Ben Vogel. Brothers will be going to Ed Edo this Thursday. That's Edo, not Adelaide, Edo. Meeting on Tuesday will be at Sister Carol's home in Utenaik. Pray God we go right from the surrounding areas to preach the gospel. Preparing a trailer to pick up preach the gospel in the open air. Go around. Amen. And make the word of God known to those that don't want to come to service. We'll go to them and preach the gospel to them. And I'm looking forward to a wonderful time. I love open hands. Praise God. I love open hands. Praise God. What can we say this morning? Amen. It's so wonderful listening to our brother speaking and inspiration, the word of the Almighty God. You present Brother Luke this morning. You hear what he's saying? Everybody has left. Has, has left. Praise God. Demons has left. Demons has left. I believe the demons has left. <laughs> Amen. Everyone left him. Only, only Luke, the doctor, stayed with him. Referring to himself, Brother Luke. Praise God. Amen. 
I'm not going to read the scripture. I've read the scripture. Wait for the candidate to come forward. Amen. Praise God. What a time we have. What a wonderful time. Our brother Gibson is going to be is going to baptize his son. <laughs> Do you love him this morning? Do you love the Lord Jesus? Do you present him this morning? Are you happy this morning? Hey, when you feel wonderful this morning? Do you feel like I feel this morning? We all feel like praise God, like the Lord feels. Morning, give God a hand of praise. Praise God. Amen. Waiting for them to come forward. What a privilege it is for Brother Gibson to baptize his own son this morning. I told him the other day when we met them in Spur, I says. The Gibson, I want to adopt this son of yours. He's going to come and live in South Africa, yeah. Praise God. Now, thank God I've adopted him. And today he's been born again. Oh, the grace of the Almighty God. Jeremiah, William Gibson, upon the confession of your faith, I baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Holy Ghost is mine. Holy Ghost. 
the same and so is love lovely name that's the reason why that's the reason why I love we hand the service back to the apostle our pastor Peter Robert Twynham upon you his manifold blessings baptism is outward manifestation of an inward work of grace that God has done in your heart and I can truly say that God has done a work in your heart brought a, a complete and total transformation in your lives 